how would you compare? So it seems like Elon Musk is more engineering centric, but is also, mm -hmm. I think he considers himself a designer too. He has a design yeah. mind. Steve Jobs feels like he is much more idea space, design space versus engineering. Yeah. Just make it happen. Like the world should be this way, just figure it out. But but he used computers, you know, he had computer people talk to him all the time. Like Mike was a really good computer guy. He knew what computers could do. Computer meaning computer hardware, like yeah, low level hardware, stuff. software, all the pieces. The whole thing. And then he would, you know, have an idea about what could we do with this next that was grounded in reality. It wasn't like he was, you know, just finger painting on the wall and wishing somebody would interpret it. Like, so he had this interesting connection because, you know, he wasn't a computer architect or a designer, but he had an intuition from the computers we had to what could happen. And it's interesting you say intuition because it seems like he was pissing off a lot of engineers in his intuition about what can and can't be done. Those, the, like the, what is all these stories about like floppy disks and all that kind of stuff like Yeah, that. so in, in Steve, the first round, like he'd go into a lab and look at what's going on and hate it and and uh, fire people or, or ask somebody in the elevator what they're doing for Apple and you know not be happy. When he came back, my impression was, is he surrounded himself with a relatively small group of people yes. and didn't really interact outside of that as much. And then the joke was, you'd see like a little, somebody moving a prototype through the, the quad with a with a black blanket over it. And that was because it was secret, you know, partly from Steve, because they didn't want Steve to see it until it was ready. Yeah, the dynamic with Johnny Ive and Steve is interesting. It's like you don't want to, he ruins as many ideas as he generates. Yeah, yeah. It's a dangerous kind of line to walk. I, I, yeah, I but if you have a lot of ideas. Like, like Gordon Bell was famous for ideas, right? And it wasn't that the percentage of good ideas was way higher than anybody else. <laughs> it was, he had so many ideas and, and he was also good at talking to people about it and, and getting the filters right. And, you know, seeing through stuff. Whereas Elon was like, hey, I want to build rockets. So Steve would hire a bunch of rocket guys and Elon would go read rocket manuals. Okay. So Elon is a better engineer, a sense like, or like more, uh, like a love and passion for the manuals. Yeah, and the details, <laughs> the, and details. the data and the, the craftsmanship too, right? Well, I guess you had craftsmanship too, but of a different kind. Yeah. What do you make of the, just the standard for just a little longer, what do you make of like the anger and the passion and all that, the the firing and the mood swings and the madness, the, you know, being emotional and all that, that's Steve and I, I guess Elon too. So what, is that a, is that a bug or a feature? A feature. So there's a graph, which is uh, y axis productivity. Yeah. X axis at zero is chaos. Yeah. And infinity is complete order. Yeah. Right. So as you go from the, you know, the origin, as you improve order, you improve productivity. Yeah. And at some point, productivity peaks and then it goes back down again. Yeah. Too much order, nothing can happen. Yes. But the question is, is the, how close to the chaos is that? No, 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 here's the thing, yeah. is once you start moving in the direction of order, the force vector to drive you towards order is unstoppable. Oh, so it's a slippery slope. every slip. organization will move to the place where their productivity is stymied by order. So you need uh, So the question is, who's the counter force? Like, because it also feels really good. As you get more organized, then productivity goes up. The organization feels it, they orient to it towards it, right? They hire more people. They get more guys who can run process. You get bigger, right? And then inevitably, inevitably, the organization gets captured by the bureaucracy that manages all the processes. Yeah. Right, and then humans really like that. And so if you just walk into a room and say, guys, love what you're doing, but I need you to have less order. If you don't have some force behind that, nothing will happen. I, I can't tell you on how many levels that's profound. So, so that's why I say it's a feature. Now, could you be nicer about it? I don't know. I don't know any good examples of being nicer about it. <laughs> well, the, the funny thing is to get stuff done, you need people who can manage stuff and manage people because humans are complicated. They need lots of care and feeding. And you need to tell them they, they look nice and they're doing good stuff and pat them on the back, right? 
I don't know. Uh, you tell me. Is that is that needed? Oh, yeah. Humans need that. I had a friend. He started a magic group, and he said, "I figured it out. You have to praise them before they do anything." <laughs> I was waiting until they were done, and they were always mad at me. Now I tell them what a great job they're doing while they're doing it. But then you get stuck in that trap because then when you're not doing something, how do you confront these people? I, I think a lot of people that have had trauma in their childhood would disagree with you. Successful people that you need to first do the rough stuff and then be nice later. I don't know. Okay, but you Being know, nice engineering companies are full of adults who had all kinds of range of childhoods. And, you know, I don't most know. people had okay childhoods. Well, I don't know if uh, and lots of people only work for praise, which is weird. You mean like everybody? <laughs> I'm not that interested in it, but 